Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines and I'm very pleased to announce that a new DLC for City Skylines has hit the Steam market. And that of course I'm talking about industries. Now this is an update and a DLC that many people in the city building community have been waiting for for a very long time. Now anybody who used to play the um, City, uh, was SimCity, uh, will remember the things that that game had well and going for it was its ability to be able to have like micro games within it and the industries. And what do I mean by that? It means that as well as building up your city and managing all your um, traffic and anything else that you do in a, in a city building game, you also have the ability to build up industry. So you could literally mine up raw materials and then send that off to a factory to then be produced into metal and then produce the metal into another product and then sell that and then make lots of money. It was a really good, unique thing that SimCity had going for it. And, of course, when City Skylines came out and trumped SimCity over everything else it had, it was one thing that is missing, um, is that ability to be able to control your industry and to be able to produce something other than just saying, here's some default industry. And I'm very pleased to announce that they've actually introduced this now. So over the next couple of episodes and tutorials, I'm going to be showing you the different industries you can do, how to set them up properly, and what you can do with them afterwards, as well as any other things that this DLC has added to the game, and there's quite a few, and it's very exciting. So first of all, let's start off with um, like a continuation to another tutorial I did before. So if you've watched my farming tutorial, of course that is now pretty much redundant, because they've now completely revamped farming in the new version of City Skylines. So we can remember before, if you watched that video, I've got my lovely farming area over here and also a little bit here. So we're going to keep these areas but these are going to be quite different and they're going to be very used for separate things. So this one is more in town sort of farming area and I'm going to have this as more of my kind of production area. Whereas this is out of town and I'm going to use this as my minor majority of my actual farms. So how do you get started with one of these new fancy dancy uh, industrial areas. So what you do is you come down to your area and districts tab and you've got in, in some new options here called paint uh, industry area. And like you would do if you're painting another in, any other district is you would then go over and paint the entire area what you want as your industry. Which is very nice like that. Okay. So once you're in there you can see that we've got a couple of things. So you've got Fairview Centre and Daffodil Hills. Now of course Daffodil Hills is my old area but we can remove that now because it's no longer an industry area because we can go in and we remove all of our zonable industry. Ah, it seems a bit of a shame to do that but I'm afraid everything now in the new version is no longer zonable it's all ploppable and what do I mean by that so there's a couple of things I have gripes with this. It is all ploppable. I, I would really like if you could include the zonable stuff as well. But what you do is when you then come to the garbage and industry, you now notice this is a different symbol down here. It looks like a little factory rather than a little trash can we had before, a rubbish bin. So you come to there and you now got some extra options. So you've got forestry, farming, ore, oil, warehouses, and unique factories. So if we go under farming, you have tons of options here and many 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 things to do and you also you get another big area up here which shows you what you can do to be able to um, what, how you can produce money and the, the kind of the, uh, the tree, the industrial tree as such so now all of these are f <laughs> they don't really change other than the symbols so you have the extractor then you've got the processing then you've got the unique factories and then that goes for your commercial zones Okay, so I'll show you how this works. So basically you have the extractor area, so that's how you produce set products. So for example in a farm you have the fields or you have the paddocks. Then you've got processing buildings, so you turn the, the animals into food and um, other animal products and you turn the crops into food and flour and things like that. In this it comes out of flour. Um, and then you have unique factories. Now I'll get into that in another tutorial, but basically that is how you combine all these ingredients and stuff together to be able to produce something that then your city can use. And then it then gets shipped out to your commercial zones. And then you also have warehouses and things like that, and I'll get onto that in another tutorial. 
So let's start off with our main farm building. Now we've created our industrial area. We now need to say to the game, this is our farming area. And how you do that is your farm main building. Now you want to produce this, put this somewhere predominant in your region. So I'm going to put it near the entrance. Because that's that changes as you where you go up. So at the moment it's a tiny little farmhouse. And eventually it will get some power once we start producing to it. But that's a tiny little farmhouse. And as it as it increases the area here, Fairview Plantation, you can see it's currently one star. Once it goes up, it can go all the way up to five star or five level five. This will change into a big farmhouse. So it changes as you develop your area. And you can increase your level by uh, producing more resources, but also having more workers in that area, and then that produces it. Also in this view, you can see we've got... Um, I can't actually move it, there we go. You can see that this is where we produce the crops. Then this can be split either into literally just outputting crops and how much money we're producing from that and then if we produce it into flowers and how much we're producing of that and then animal products as well so you can see how it all gets processed through which is very very nice so now we've got our main building now let's put down a couple of industries now what I do like to do is I like to turn off that view because it's nice but I find it a little bit too evasive now down here we've got some things we've got main auxiliary buildings so we've got our workers farm barracks so we put one of these down so this is where our workers are going to stay while they're on the farm also farm maintenance buildings so this is where all our tractors and stuff will get maintained and uh, all our vehicles will be kept which is nice in there and then we come to extractor building so it's a bit of an odd name under the farm called it extractor because you don't really extract anything you just kind of produce so you've got a couple of options. So you've got, um, this is a small crop field, this is a medium crop field, and this is a large crop field. You also then have small fruit field, medium fruit field, and then a large fruit field. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down this area here, placing some large crop fields along this area here, and I think we can probably fill that gap with um, a small one just in there. So it nicely fits. And then let's go some large crop field large fruit field and a large fruit field so you can see these these change depending on what they are and you can actually click on them and you can you can show what they're like so this is a greenhouse we can see here this is corn but we can change it to be cotton potatoes wheat or another greenhouse so i'm going to change one of these to be a greenhouse like that so you can really make these look modern industrial, but actually no, I'm not going to have these greenhouses, I think. Let's have these two as wheat, I think. Oh, actually, potatoes? No, that was potatoes. Corn. Yes, that was corn. And I'm not going to have this. Let's pears, I think, because this is oranges. Okay, let's produce some more. So we can see here we've got some production chains. So it shows us how the production travels. But this is the kind of thing which I'm going over in this tutorial now. So let's put down some medium farms here. Like that. Okay. So we should have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. We've got quite a few um, things up and ready to go. Okay. So that's all I mean. Actually, no. Let's fill this area. I think I don't think I've left enough room there. That's a shame. That's okay. Okay, filling the area because we might as well fill the area with all of the possible things we can do. And we'll go back and change our appearances because. Greenhouses are nice if you've got like a farm area in the middle of your town, but we don't have that. Um, we want just, you know, your farms in the middle of nowhere, really. So we come out, so we've got a couple of these. So let's change these out. So I want some apples. And you can be some oranges. And you can be some potatoes. So you can see here we now got our fields. 
and they're start already starting to produce some. So if we click on one, you can see here that it's producing crops, and it's currently got it's not it hasn't got anything stored. So it says this building produces crops, and we can see loads and loads of tractors coming out already. But that's a lot of you know um, produce which is now hitting our roads, which isn't getting stored anywhere to be able to be produced anywhere. I want to be able to make sure we've got a stockpile of this just in case it happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, pop down some warehouses. So uh, not some warehouses, sorry. Come back to farms and if we come to here to storage buildings you've got some options. So we've got some grain silos. So we're going to produce along the back wall here. We're going to put some grain silos. Just like so. I don't think we'll stick a large barn as well in here somewhere. Let's take a large barn there and also a large barn there. And what this is is it's like a, a place for all the places all the uh, fields and stuff just to put things um while uh they're not used. So if they're not needed to be um used up somewhere else or exported somewhere, then it's somewhere for it to be stored. So you can see here there's some storage modes. So you've got three options, you've got balanced, which basically means that it's going to um get rid of as much produce that is stored there as it's much as it's going to get in. So it's going to keep it about 50-50. Um, if you want to make sure you've got plenty stocked in, so you've got loads and loads of... Uh, um, if you've got, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you've got plenty of uh, stock ready just in case you've got a sudden burst of people wanting it. Then you'd have your fill. If you've got uh, some which is in very high demand, then of course you'd put it to empty. And of course, then it will be trying to get rid of rid of the produce as it's coming in, so it's getting rid of it as quickly as possible. So that's very quite self-explanatory. And same thing for the barns over here. Now we've got our fields, and we can see we already a free star, and we're producing two thousand um, dollars here, which is very nice. And um, we can see that pretty much it's just the produce we're uh, producing so far, which is holding us back from that next level. But that's going up very very quickly. So what do we want to go to next? Now we want to produce, do some more production. So here's the produce buildings. So we've got a couple of options. So we've got uh, some animal paddocks, animal pastures. We've got a flour mill. We've got a cattle shed, milking parlour, and of course we've got our slaughterhouse. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stick some. I think let's stick in some cattle fields. I think. Our pastures, so it holds some animals. Now, of course, these won't hold just animals by itself. What they do is they take in the crop, which is stored either on the uh, extractor or in our silos, and then it's sent to there. And then, of course, then the crops are then used to feed the animals, and then that is produced into animal products. So you can see there, it's already produced uh, one ton of animal products, and of course, then they can be sent off to be either used in uh, milking or the slaughterhouse and things like that. Um, but we already said we got an idea for what we want to do for that. So if we come over here, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to then come into here to remove this area of industry. Like so. So it gets rid of all that industry which is very soon to go, but what I'm going to do is delete some of these inner roads and I'm going to zone it as industrial cherry region and inside this we're going to then uh, we're going to have to put a main farm building because it is a new, technically a new area and then under production Let's stick in our flour mill. So it's good to note there that you don't have to have everything in the same region. They can mix between the two, which is very good to know. Um, let's stick in some milking parlors down here. And let's stick in a, uh, a big slaughterhouse. Now this is a very big building. Um, what was this one? Cattle shed. Ah, yes. So what does this do? We can see a uh, well ventilation for raised cattle, so that helps raise cattle as well as the field. So let's put some of these in here so that then they're closer to the slaughterhouse and milking 
parlors. And what I'm going to do as well is just to help this region flourish is I'm going to stick some um, silos in just so that it's got a kind of year round area or a year round production value. And we can see there now that all of that traffic which was coming here and is producing loads and loads of stuff is now tra uh, traveling down here across the bridge and into either our storage of cattle sheds or actually you know, now producing animal products putting the things into the milking parlor so we can see that this uses crops it uses crops and meat into animal products this uses crops into animal products so um, you don't technically need the um, fields here to produce it for the slaughter and the milking parlor um, these take in crops and produce animal products which then animal products can go into factories which I'll cover in the next tutorial uh, the only last thing on here is you can stick a nice farm fence around it so if you wanted a fancy farm going around your area you can and it looks quite nice um, so yeah that's pretty much it so I'll cover a couple more of these so I'll go over how to do uh, the oil um, the ore and also the forestry in a future episode but I hope um, that's been a quick guide on how to get your farms up and running now and get that all ready to produce for your city to produce and I'll cover um, how to do the factories in the future episode. So I've been Scully from the Blue Coconut Family. Hit that like button if you liked this video to help other people find it. Um, or hit that subscribe button so you know when the next one will come out. Um, also, if you've got any ideas on what uh, you would like to see me cover in one of these tutorials, it could be anything within City Skylines, just pop it in the description below. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!